uh, hello viewers. I would like to show you um, as how to rewind a transformer that you can use for your inverter. Um, <coughs> say we will plant an inverter for 500 watts capacity that will be able to run four ceiling fans and half a dozen uh, fluorescent lights, CFL lamps or fluorescent tube lights. Now, what we will do is we will take a transformer that will suit for this purpose which can handle large capacity of currents. <coughs> so, in this uh, context, I have chosen a microwave oven transformer. Now, this is how a microwave oven transformer looks in appearance. And be careful, is mentioned danger, high voltage. Now, with these specifications, what I would like to tell you is the number representing this approximately determines the wattage or power handling capacity of the microwave transformer. Here it's mentioned as 700E which means roughly this can handle a capacity of 700 watts but using this we should not design an inverter of high wattage range. The lower the better. We will try to design or uh, use it for designing a 500 watts capacity inverter. Now coming about the other parts <coughs> I would like to show you is this is one winding and this is the other winding. In microwave oven, this is used as a primary, uh, I mean to say for uh, uh, injecting 220 volt and uh, this is a 2000 volt winding which carries a very high potential. So, I once again inform you do not touch this winding when it is off the microwave for a shorter duration. Remove it from the microwave oven or you can take a help of some expert electrician to remove it from the microwave oven. Leave it alone for a couple of days better so that this will be discharge of all the voltage from the capacitor and from the transformer. Now, what we will do is we are going to use this winding where we will give the AC input 220 volt AC and we will rewind this portion by removing this existing coil. We will put mm -hmm. a new coil where we will be able to get 12 volt or 18 volt or 24 volt as per the requirement that we will be using for our inverter and we should wind it as a center tap winding. Now to remove this winding there are a few methods. Either you can use your hacksaw, a kind of this uh, tool and cut the winding away on both sides and remove the winding and clean everything whatever debris is inside and by using a thick copper wire which can handle a capacity of uh, roughly 5 to 10 amps you can start looping in around forming a winding that may be tedious task and also you may be ending up scratching the enamel copper wire which will not be successful for your secondary winding so one other option is we will try to remove the lamination portion. So we will cut it and splice it up so we can splice the, splice the windings. And after removing the winding, we can rewind it with the same dimensions with a thicker wire for low voltage and high current and insert it into this cavity. Now, as you see, this core should have been found by EI laminations. The, per the people who are familiar with transformers, I think they know what is an EI lamination. This portion resembles letter E and this portion resembles letter I. Now, when you see, they are joined at both sides by a kind of welding technology. This side and this side. But this side, if you see, you can see the lines which represent that IE laminations are fixed in proper places. Now, what I will try to do is, I will take the hacksaw and I will start cutting this welded portion to a depth of 2 mm approximately, this side and hopefully this side too. So, I will be able to remove this IE lamination uh, apart. Now, I will suspend the video here. After removing this, I will get back to on continuing the video again. Thank you so much.